Last year, a major report on discipline in schools was delivered to the government. That report was called Learning Behaviour. It was written by Sir Alan Steer. Sir Alan, what's the key to good behaviour in schools? <laughs> well, there's no single key. Just the same as there's no single key to success in schools. There's 101 keys. And I'm afraid the uh, tough message is you've got to apply all of them fairly consistently if you're going to be successful. So children can be taught to behave. And I think you need to have that culture that would Whatever the situation is, you do your best, not being soft, sometimes it's being extremely tough, but you work to change that situation, because if you don't, of course, that child is doomed and society is going to have problems for a very long period. So what you're saying is if there are very different styles of teaching, different expectations in different classrooms, then the pupils will get confused. One of the major difficulties we have in the English educational system is so much practice which takes place in primary schools is dumped at the age of 11 without consideration without thought and that is just silly you know a lot of the things which children have been brought up to they've been accustomed to in primary schools disappears and it disappears without even thinking about it. seating plans is an obvious example one of the most effective ways to manage a class is to actually think through where children are going to sit how they're going to interact with each other you know you're determining the classroom no primary teacher would allow children to just wander in and sit wherever they like, and yet often in secondary schools we do. Silly, all schools should develop their own teaching and learning policy where they identify that which everybody will follow and that which is the areas where individual creativity will reign. It's not for the government. I think instant resignation if the government tells schools what their learning and teaching policy is, but I think it's right to expect all schools to have gone through the process of saying well, what is it we are going to concentrate on for the next few weeks, next few months, what are the really key things we're all going to push on, and by doing so we mutually support each other. You know, teachers sometimes are a little bit left on their own. Good teamwork supports teachers, doesn't restrict them. You made it clear that behaviour is generally good in schools, but what is it that sometimes causes it to go wrong? What we've got to do is to recognise that those schools need support. And it's not punitive to give people support. It's actually highly um, immoral not to give those schools support and understanding. So in those sort of schools, I would hope to see, um, for instance, support teams related to special educational needs, because there's a very, very close connection, in my opinion, between children who display behaviour problems and sometimes neglected special needs which have not been addressed. Um, you know, going back to the connection between behaviour and learning, if a child actually can't access the learning, why are we surprised if they're naughty? But if a teacher is faced with a persistently difficult child in their classroom, what sanctions are available to them? That sort of scenario is one which a lot of teachers will relate to. Um, I never had a problem with if you've got that sort of situation it needs to be diffused. Um, you do not want uh, confrontations, um, that's only going to make matters worse. If a teacher is in that situation they need to be uh, able to diffuse it by perhaps the child being removed um, for whatever time is necessary. But if a child is removed out of a class it's got to be for a purpose. It's got to be for a purpose of changing that behaviour so the child can return and hopefully behave differently. There's a whole range of issues coming out of that. Um, is the issue related to the, the child? Are there issues related to the support that teacher's been given in terms of training? Um, a very, very big issue for all of us, I think, who, um, who've led schools, is what is the quality of support and training we give to people? So is that where a school needs a clear behaviour policy? They do need a clear behaviour policy, and I'm very supportive of that. People need to know, you know, teachers need to know, um, for example, what support they can expect. Students need to know. I'm not keen on railway line policies, which um, if you do this, this will happen, because uh, before you know what, you've um, shunted children out where in actual fact an intelligent intervention could, uh, could work uh, wonders. I'm probably just as interested in teaching and learning policies. You know, where schools work effectively as teams of teachers and in doing so give the children a sense of purpose of why they're at the school. See, children don't go to school to behave, they go to school to learn.